Hey folks, Eric here from Dirty Old Sneakers, and I've been running with the Sunto 9 Peak Pro for about a month now, and I'm excited to tell you about it. Now first, I do need to say that I was sent this watch by the Sunto team, and I'm pretty sure I need to send it back, but I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. That said, I'm not beholden to them in any way, and no one's going to review this footage before I post it. So in essence, you're seeing it at the same time as the folks that sent me the watch. Oh, and if you'd like to get one of these watches for yourself or an athlete in your world, I put a link in the description of this video. Just know that it's an affiliate link, so I will make a couple of shekels off of the sale, but at no charge to you. It just goes to help fund the channel so I can continue to do videos like this. Uh, so if you're so inclined, I'd appreciate it if you use that link. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Suntu is calling this the thinnest GPS watch on the market, and someone who's used to wearing one of these big chunky Garmin watches, I can tell you that it's pretty sleek. The watch comes in at 43 millimeters wide by 10.8 millimeters deep, and the bezel is made from stainless steel attached to a glass fiber polymer case and covered in sapphire crystal. This 55 gram package attaches to your wrist with a silicone band, and I like this little clip thing here at the end it, that holds it in place. It's a really nice touch, and I think some other watch companies should pay attention. The LED backlit display has a resolution of 240 by 240 pixels, so it's super clear, but it's only 1.2 inches wide, which is a bit of a bummer. Look at all that wasted space there. The display could be close to two inches wide if it stretched all the way to the sides. It reminds me of the Phoenix 5 in a way. So let's talk battery life. There are three predefined battery modes, performance at 40 hours, endurance with 70 hours, and tour at 300 hours. And there's also an option to customize it. I'm gonna go into the run function to give you the example here. See, so if you go into the run function, you can see that I can turn some features on or off to increase or decrease the battery consumption. Now, in addition to the battery mode, Sunto offers these smart reminders to help ensure there's enough battery life for you to do your next workout. Some are preemptive based on activity history. So if you're usually doing long runs on Saturday and you don't have enough battery on Friday night, you might just get a notice from your watch to asking you to charge it. A really cool feature. Now the watch has everything you've come to expect from a GPS enabled smartwatch. You can tether to your phone for text or call alerts. It'll count steps, calories burned, give you some activity targets, all day heart rate tracking, blood oxygen saturation monitoring, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. While it has no onboard music, you can use the watch to control the music on your phone. It'll also track your sleep and give you info on sleep duration, time awake, sleep stages, and a score on your overall sleep quality. The wrist-based heart rate monitor has a slew of training tools included like real-time heart rate average, uh, peak training effect monitor, recovery time indication, and it's gonna give you your VO2 max as well. So let's talk sensors because that's really where the rubber meets the road. GNSS sensors include GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Kizis, and Beidou. It also has a compass, the blood oxygen saturation monitor I mentioned, accelerometer, a barometric altimeter for ascent and descent, and a wrist-based heart rate monitor. Now the Sunto technology is pretty cool in that it has some checking and double checking within its sensors. What do I mean by that? Sunto uses something it calls fused alti to calibrate your altitude. This is a combination of GPS and barometric altitude that minimizes the effect of temporary and offset errors in the final altitude reading. For running, it has what it calls fused speed. This is a combination of GPS and the accelerometer readings to measure your running speed more accurately. The GPS signal is adaptively filtered based on wrist acceleration, meaning when you're swinging it, giving you more accurate readings at a steady running speeds and quicker response to changes in speed. I've always wondered how watches dealt with arm swinging in relation to speed. I guess that answers it. So let's talk about those GNSS sensors. You can see that all the standards from around the world are represented here. And a lot of watches these days are offering multi-frequency connections, meaning you can connect to more than one standard at a time. Now, according to Sunto, you can connect up to four SAT standards at once. However, I couldn't find information anywhere in the literature and no one from the brand got back to me by the time I recorded this video, so I'm unsure. I'm unsure if that's like a smart connection, meaning it looks at the four strongest and connects to them or connects to one and then adds more as it needs a stronger signal. That last option would be great for battery saving. The brand got back to me after I recorded this and gave me this statement, which I added in while I was editing. Map functionality includes everything you see on the screen here. 
barometric altimeter works together with the built-in heart rate to give you your altitude acclimation with blood oxygen saturation included. A nice little feature if you're using this as a climbing watch or doing a trail run at altitude or any run at altitude for that matter. Would have been nice if I had it when I was doing the boulder to boulder a number of years ago, but I didn't. There are more than 95 activity profiles you can choose from on this watch, but I'm only gonna focus on the big three for endurance sports enthusiasts. That is swim, bike, and run, well, and multi-sport, so I guess four. If you want or need extra accuracy, you can add the Sunto foot pod along with the Sunto chest heart rate monitor. Both connect to the watch via Bluetooth, but you don't really need them. I found the wrist-based heart rate monitor and GPS accuracy to be commiserate with other watches that I've tested. The Sunto gives you all the metrics you'll need specific to running, like your pace, the ultra accurate pace via fuse speed that I mentioned earlier, your average max or lap pace in real time, uh, the ability to do a workout against a ghost runner, which is nice. You can add a duration or distance based target. You can do an interval workout, uh, set your heart rate zones and do a zone based workout or plan a route in the Sunto app and run that route using turn by turn directions provided from Komoot. And then look at all the stats, including a table of laps in the Sunto app. The cycling profile gives you speed, distance, average speed in real time, speed and cadence support via a Bluetooth device, a power meter support via also attached Bluetooth device, a bike lap and lap maximum power, that power being with the uh, power sensor, uh, a real time lap table with average heart rate, average power and average speed, and interval guidance with power, speed and heart rate. Swim profile gives you pace and distance, open water swim distance, uh, records your heart rate with the wrist-based heart rate monitor underwater, gives you swimming time by pool length, lap, and total, uh, swimming stroke rate, count, and type, your stroke efficiency, will do automatic intervals, and it will give you an interval lap table. And lastly, if you're a multi-sport enthusiast, you can get all of the functionality I already mentioned while also having the ability to change sport modes during the exercise, use pre-configured multi-sport modes, uh, check out post-race analysis of multi-sport exercises by sport and see a multi-sport exercise summary on the watch itself. So what are my overall thoughts on this watch? Well, like I said up top, it's sleek. And for the functionality it offers, it's nice and compact. The new Sunto interface is much more intuitive and easy to navigate, and the touchscreen was responsive in cold, wet, and dry conditions. This is not something that you want to overlook when you're considering a new watch. At $700, it's just on the high end of the middle of the road watches, if you can believe that or not. 700 bucks is a lot of money. Is it worth it? Well, ultimately that's your call. I can tell you that the biggest bummer of this watch is the size of the display. It's really the only big drawback for me, but maybe you want something this small. These old eyes tend to need something a little bigger these days. So I'm gonna stick with the Garmin Phoenix 7 for now. So like I said up front, if you'd like to get one of these watches for yourself or an athlete in your world, I put a link in the description of this video. Just know again that it goes to an affiliate account, so I'm gonna make a couple of shekels off of each of the sales, but at no charge to you. And if you like this video, I'm obligated by the YouTube Terms of Service to ask you to smash that like button, get it up into the YouTube algorithm a little bit more and into more eyeballs, for folks that might just find it useful. And I'm also obligated to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you like gear reviews, race reviews, New York City Marathon tips, or anything else endurance sports related. Oh, 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 and hit that bell next to it so you get notified when I put new videos up. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks, and I'll see you next time.